All right, so it's a, it's a little known fact that possession movies are generally some of my favorite horror movies. So I'll, I'm, I'm a sucker. I'll watch just about anything with possession or exorcism in the title. And unfortunately, this does more often than not lead to fail. So in line with this theme, our two movies today are The Exorcism of Molly Hartley and Ava's Possessions, both available on Netflix. Now, The Exorcism of Molly Hartley is a direct-to-DVD sequel of 2008's The Haunting of Molly Hartley, which I haven't seen. And I didn't actually know that it was a sequel when I went in to go watch it, so this is really only going to speak to my impressions of the movie uh, as as it is itself. Now this movie is set six years after that because apparently the devil takes six years, six months, and six days to uh, incubate. So in the years that have passed since the botched attempt to prevent Molly from becoming the Antichrist, she's become a type A overachiever and goes out to celebrate her 24th birthday and promotion to I think like the youngest partner of a law firm or something by going to a nightclub, getting sauced and doing a bunch of drugs and then taking some random strangers home for a, a sexy romp and then, you know, murdering them and dismembering them in her bathtub, you know, as you do. And for this, she is sent to Catholic asylum, uh, it's a Catholic run asylum, just so happens to house a disgraced priest who screwed the pooch during a different exorcism and got defrocked for. The movie itself is competently shot and the scares are well done enough, even though they are very, very obvious. The makeup did get a bit dodgy in a couple of spots, but I've definitely seen worse CG. Except the problem here is that the acting was very, very phoned in. For the most part, the story is bursting with cliches. Although as trite and overdone as everything in the movie was, it did manage to hold my attention and didn't feel too long. But I'd probably suggest finding something else to watch before this, unless you were really invested in the story of Molly Hartley, the original. So well, Exorcism of Molly Hartley was basically just a rundown of every cliché checkbox you could possibly have with the possession genre. Ava's Possessions is actually a really fresh and different look at the possession movie. So most possession movies are pretty content to start at the possession or before the possession, basically chronicle them falling to the demon, wreaking havoc, and all the way up to the, the exorcism and everybody lived happily ever after. But Ava's Possessions actually starts at the exorcism and is probably the only movie that I've actually seen that then has to go and deal with the uncomfortable prospect of having to regain the trust of your friends and family, keeping yourself out of jail after a demon's been cavorting around in your meat suit for a little while. So the uh, the zombie horror subgenre has kind of had that tongue-in-cheek, life-after-undeath surrealism for a little while, uh, stuff like Zombies Anonymous in the flesh, uh, the TV show iZombie. But I don't remember ever seeing that sort of thing applied to possession movies and it does make for a fair amount of fun here. There is a little bit of cognitive dissonance here that this is a world with support groups for the recently exercised that can reduce your legal charges post-possession, but magic shops are completely unregulated, fringe outposts, and nobody really buys your whole possession in the store. But it just sort of lends itself to kind of an overall surreal haze that exists inside the movie. I think the whole concept is really great and clever, and the visual look of the movie was pretty striking. There's a lot of great, colorful strangeness to it. The acting also does a pretty good job to deliver all of this, the weirdness of the concept with such a straight face. As far as a couple of things I didn't like, I wasn't a fan of the way that they handled the whole approaching demon thing. It makes the scenes that it happens in a bit jumpy and harder to follow than they really needed to be. It was also a little bit strange how the demonic makeup on the characters was pretty gnarly, except everybody kept talking about how hot they were, but I guess that's supposed to come off as sort of just like a, an aura from the, the demon. Story-wise, some of the revelations that happened right before the end got a little bit jumpy and feel like they were shoehorned in there, but really that's such an incredibly minor nitpick to have. Ava's Possessions is a possession movie here that definitely does not do stock typical. It, it has fun with the concept and does something really pretty new and interesting with it and uh, is definitely well worth checking out. Uh, but anyway, that's all the time we have for now. If you have seen either of these two movies, please let me know what you thought of them below. If you have anything else that you'd like to see on this show or on Modern Horror, also leave that in a comment below. Otherwise, like and subscribe for more videos. And uh, if you are feeling particularly awesome, you can check out our Patreon campaign here. Anyway, cheers folks.